Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thank you for all of your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're gonna feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Sovereign Grid shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. In today's Q&A video, we're going to be answering your questions about gloves. Remember, if you have any questions or comments while you're watching one of our videos, please ask them in the comments section below each video. I try to get back to as many of those questions as possible. Our first question today is from John C. and it reads, what gloves would you recommend wearing to a formal event when it's in the winter and you want gloves to wear going to the event? Uh, so great question, John, and it really depends on the level of formality of the event. So like with all formal events, the fewer embellishments, the more formal something is. So whenever it comes to a pair of gloves, uh, what that would mean is that you really would want your gloves uh, really with as little uh, visible stitching as possible. For gloves, what that would mean is that you would want inside stitching versus outside stitching. Uh, and you'd want machine veins versus hand sewn veins because they're gonna be straighter and more discreet. Uh, and a beautiful uh, and very subtle option that again, I've only seen from La Vraque Cadet is you can actually elect to have the, uh, the stitching on the uh, wrist of the glove done with a blind stitch, right? So you don't see any of the stitching along the edge of the glove. Whereas with a normal hand stitched border or machine stitched, again, it's an additional level of stitching. It's just one more detail and kind of embellishment that make the glove less formal. But an important rule to remember about gloves uh, and an overcoat is that you never wear them inside. So the moment you enter the venue, you would want to remove your overcoat and your gloves. If you're well, dressed in white tie, uh, then you would simply carry your gloves with you uh, in your hand. So an interesting detail about white tie is that most formally and most technically you should wear black gloves to the event that then you would take off with your overcoat and leave at the coat check and then you would put on your white kidskin gloves but then whenever you get into the event uh, you would uh, carry your white kidskin gloves and only wear them whenever you're dancing so that you don't soil the hand or the dress of your dancing partner. Now, when it comes to black tie, you have a little bit more uh, latitude in the type of glove that you can wear, but still the same principle holds true that the uh, more simple the glove, uh, the fewer kind of embellishments, the more formal the glove is. So, uh, you know, again, a great example of a beautifully elegant formal glove uh, is this black glove uh, from La Racadette. It's in kid skin, it's incredibly soft, inside stitching, machine sewn veins, uh, and blind uh, stitching uh, at the border of the wrist. Uh, this is an incredibly sleek glove uh, and perfect for a formal event. And then comes the third category of evening formal wear, which is whenever you're going out to a nice dinner, uh, you're wearing uh, you know, an evening suit, uh, so maybe a dark uh, charcoal or a dark navy or even a black suit uh, with a tie. Again, you could certainly get away with a formal pair of gloves like these black ones right here, uh, but you have a little bit more flexibility to play around. You could play around with colors. You could do anything that's dark, really. So a dark burgundy, a dark navy. Uh, you could even wear you know, these beautiful black uh, alligator gloves. Uh, you could wear a pair of dark peccary gloves. Um, you know, this is a, a pair from our Lavrette Cadets special project with alligator trim. Uh, so as long as it works with the outfit and it's dark uh, and you're wearing it with an overcoat, uh, then, you know, traditionally it would be okay. The final category of formal wear is daytime formal wear or morning formal wear. If you're wearing a morning suit, uh, you could wear a pair of gloves, but traditionally they would be a really light gray suede kid skin. So thanks, John, for your question. As you can see, uh, you know, formal wear for gloves is a very nuanced topic, and it's difficult to give hard and fast rules because over the last 30 or 40 years, you know, the rules of gloves for formal wear really have been in flux. You know, whereas 40 or 50 years ago, you would never show up to a white tie event, you know, without a proper white kidskin pair of gloves. You know, today, a lot of people show up to that same event uh, without gloves, and nobody thinks anything of it. But John, that said, you know, most likely you're not gonna be doing white tie. And in that case, a beautiful pair of black uh, gloves uh, that are very sleek without many details uh, are an exceptional uh, way to really elevate uh, any type of formal ensemble. So uh, my recommendation would be a simple pair of black gloves, inside stitching, machine stitched veins, uh, and if you're ordering a pair from La Vaca uh, blind stitching on the wrist. 
Thank you for your question, John. We look forward to seeing you a pair of Sovereign Great Shoe Laces. Our second question today is from Fred Calabrese, and it reads, I've lived in Southern and Central Arizona for many years, and I don't have experience with non-work gloves. The last time I wore non-work gloves, I was in the Army. My question is, how do we pair gloves? Do they get paired with shoes? Do they get paired with outerwear? So first off, Fred, thank you for your service in the Army. Uh, we here at the Hangar Project uh, appreciate and salute all of our veterans, and I'm sure you can do an absolutely incredible mirror shine. So pairing with gloves is really just like with any accessory. You just want it to match uh, the general uh, color palette of the ensemble that you're wearing. Uh, and really with gloves, you know, on its most basic level, I would split them into your browns, uh, and your blacks are dark colors. So if you're wearing a suit like I'm wearing today with brown shoes, uh, you would want to wear a brown colored pair of shoes or something that is of the brown family. But if you're wearing a more formal suit, something dark like a dark a charcoal, uh, a navy, a black, you would want to stick to your darker family of colors uh, like black, navy, burgundy, or gray. Uh, it's not something I would worry too much about. You know, for me personally, gloves are something that you know, I'm not wearing all the time, so if you were just to buy your first pair of gloves because, you know, it's been so long since you've worn a pair uh, outside of work, you know, I would honestly buy, you know, either a black pair of gloves uh, or uh, something that's a dark gray uh, or a brown. Fred, hope that answers your question, and we look forward to seeing you a pair of our Sovereign Grid shoelaces. Our third question today is from Andres, and it's about glove care. And it reads, uh, would you recommend using Saphir products like the Renovator with gloves like these? Uh, Andres, uh, really gloves are actually very simple to care for. Um, you know, they really don't need much, if any, conditioning uh, at all. If you were to condition them, you could use something like the Saphir Napa Leather Balm. Uh, the reason I would recommend the Napa is because it doesn't contain any waxes. And on a material like this, you definitely would not want to apply any waxes to the surface because it would totally transform uh, just the really soft and supple texture of the skin itself. And then you'd have to worry about the waxes potentially rubbing off on clothing uh, or something else. So uh, definitely I would stay away from anything with waxes. And that's the beauty of the Napa Leather Balm, is it's just those uh, hydrating elements that are gonna nourish the leather uh, without adding any waxes. But that said, uh, I've honestly never conditioned a pair of gloves. Uh, glove care is really quite simple. Um, you know, if you were to get your uh, gloves wet, I would recommend completely submerging the entire glove in water uh, so that uh, you don't end up with any uh, water rings and then lay it flat, straighten it out uh, on a, some towel or some paper away from sunlight, away from direct heat. I wouldn't put a fan on it and just let the uh, glove dry naturally. Um, you know, overnight or really as long as it takes for the glove to dry. You don't want to do anything to accelerate that process because it can cause shrinking. The other thing that I really like to do with my gloves uh, is, you know, at the end of the season, whenever I'm packing them away uh, for the summertime, you know, I'll take my gloves and I'll kind of straighten them out, you know, get them nice and neat. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll take a heavy book or several books and I'll stack them on top of the glove. And I just find that that helps flatten the glove uh, and really helps them just keep and maintain a very nice clean shape. Uh, really in much of the same way that, you know, shoe trees uh, help shoes, again, maintain their shape and prevent unnecessary wrinkling. Andreas, great question. And we look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Great Shoelaces. Our fourth question today is from Sora BG1. Uh, it reads, great video Kirby, uh, always a fan of the Hangar Project, great new offerings, thank you. I have a question about Lavaz uh, gloves you may be able to get in the bottom of. Do they ever make gloves with the closure? I'd love a pair of their Pecri or Kidskin gloves with a buttonhole wrist closure, but I can't find any record of Lavaz gloves anywhere online. Uh, with these. So uh, absolutely we can do this. Uh, as you may be aware of, we're running currently a special project or a digital trunk show where you can have a pair of Lavra Cadet gloves made based on your individual hand tracing uh, so that they fit perfectly. It's as close to bespoke as you can get without actually going to Paris. Uh, twice, you know, once to have them take your measurements and do their own tracing, and the second time to come back to, to try on your trial glove. Uh, so it's really, it's an incredible opportunity to have a, a made-to-order pair of gloves 
uh, made specifically for you. And of course, during this process, we can do small modifications like a button wrist closure. Uh, so we've actually added this option uh, to all of our glove listings. Um, but you know, if you're someone that has a very particular idea that you want for your glove, you know, maybe it's a button closure at the wrist, or maybe it's some other detail that you know. Who knows? Maybe you saw in a pair of gloves that your grandfather used to wear all the time feel free to contact customer service. We love these types of inquiries. I mean, one of the beautiful things of working with an atelier such as La Vette Cadet is that these small kind of nuanced uh, and really obscure requests uh, can be absolutely met uh, in their workshop. So uh, I hope we're able to make a pair of gloves for you and uh, you know, please reach out to customer service and we'll take care of you. I hope that answers your question and we look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grid shoelaces. Our last question today is from uh, Barney uh, MN, and it reads, any recommendations when taking care of gloves specifically for uh, peccary leather? So peccary leather, absolutely uh, one of my favorite materials. I love peccary um, you know, because of its real kind of nuanced, subtle visual interest. I mean, if you look at a pair of peccary gloves uh, versus a pair of the kid skin, uh, it's certainly a less formal glove uh, than a polished kid skin, and I just love the nuanced kind of visual detail that Peccary offers. Uh, you know, the short answer is, is that Peccary really doesn't require any special care. I mean, you know, you really shouldn't be too gentle with your gloves. I find that if you buy a pair of beautiful gloves and you don't wear them, what's the point of having them? Uh, you know, part of a beautiful pair of gloves is that they can be worn, uh, and that the more you wear them, the more beautiful they become. And, uh, you know, the more you wear a pair of gloves, the more they really conform to your hand, the more comfortable they become, the more character they show. So I would never recommend that someone really uh, go easy on their gloves, uh, use them. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a pair of gloves. Now, the one thing that I do like to do just for the care of my gloves is making sure that I always uh, store them flat. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, after I take off a pair of gloves, you know, I'll flatten them out. And if I have something in my closet, I'll actually put a book or something on top of the glove to just further press them down and smooth them out. Uh, you know, it prevents, you know, the fingers from, you know, beginning to, you know, really uh, curl under. Uh, but other than that, you know, really no special care or attention is required uh, to keep your Leva Cadet gloves looking great. Thanks again for your question, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grid shoelaces. So thank you for all your questions about gloves. I mean, gloves are one of these categories that I just absolutely love. It's one of those obscure accessories that really nobody out there is doing anything uh, in a real deliberate, uh, committed way. So that is the uh, opportunity we've always embraced here at The Hangar Project. Uh, we have one of the most comprehensive uh, collections of uh, luxury uh, handcrafted gloves uh, made anywhere in the world. Uh, and all of our gloves are made from La Vra Cadet, which is widely considered to be the best, you know, the finest glove maker uh, anywhere left today. One of the other things to keep in mind is that in addition to our ready to wear line uh, that we have uh, here available uh, for purchase is we also have an extensive made to order line. You can commission any made to order glove based on your individualized hand tracing. Uh, and uh, you know, if you have anything special in mind that you'd like to have done, a special color of peccary or a special color of kid skin or some nuanced detail, you know, like I said earlier from a glove that your grandfather used to wear, you know, please by all means reach out to us. You know, we would love to help bring that into reality. Also, we know that one size doesn't fit all, and that's why all of our ready-to-wear gloves are sized by the half centimeter, and we have over five sizes uh, for every style to ensure that you can get the perfect fit. Once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only do these Q&As give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering, but they allow me to take a moment to just acknowledge my appreciation for everyone's involvement in this channel. I've absolutely enjoyed this platform and how it's allowed me to connect more directly with you all, and I really have fun interacting with you and answering your questions. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about the content help us make better videos and this more fun for all of us. I read all those questions and comments uh, and really do enjoy getting back to as many of them as possible. Today I'm wearing a bespoke Chris Despis suit that has a beautiful tan uh, open weave fabric uh, that is perfect for summertime. 
I've got uh, my Simona Godard Opera Pocket Square. Uh, the suit has uh, working buttonholes, uh, Besom pockets, uh, double vents, and my trousers, of course, uh, are, have a tabbed waistband with a single reverse pleat, uncuffed uh, with a slight break. I'm also wearing my bespoke uh, George Cleverly uh, bluchers made out of Russian reindeer. It has a hand-stitched apron with a blind-stitched split toe. And the socks I'm wearing uh, are a pair of Brashani socks uh, that are a really beautiful kind of geometric earthy green color. I'm also wearing a brown a grenadine fino, a sovereign grade tie. And remember the fino is that finer weave to the grenadine pattern. Uh, and I'm wearing my new uh, Optimo Hat Company uh, Monte Cristi Panama hat with a, a vintage brown ribbon. I'm wearing a pair of our 2.25 inch uh, Kirby Allison horn collar stays. And today I'm wearing my Rolex uh, Datejust, which uh, was a gift from my grandfather. And of course the tie, pocket square socks, and collar stays uh, are all items that we have available here at The Hanger Project. If you'd like to shop them, please click the link in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison. Thanks for joining us.